Hey guys, uh, welcome back. Today, uh, Monday and Tuesday, we're going to be doing some practice with equations, uh, slope, and writing equations in point slope form. So we're kind of just slowly building on new material that should be mirroring what you're doing in your Algebra 1 class. So let's get started. All right, so like I said, we're going to do equation solving practice, a little bit more of that slope and writing in point slope form. So let's just do a quick practice. We're going to solve this equation here. Um, so this one we have 11x minus 7x equals 32. So you can see here we have more than one x. We need to combine our like terms. So we'll just do that by doing 11x minus 7x. And of course, that's 4x. That still equals 32. Now to get x alone, we just need to divide by 4. And so we divide both sides by 4. We The 4s cancel here, and we get 32 divided by 4. That's just 8. Not too bad. All right, let's do one here. You'll notice... Very similar, we've got x's in two different places, but this time we have 6x on the left and an x on the right-hand side. So we'll talk about how to do that. So we need to combine these like terms, but we're going to do that across the equal sign. So here we have x being added to this side, and we need to get it over here with the 6x, so we'll subtract x on both sides. So this positive x and negative x will cancel, and then we have 6x minus x on this side, which is 5x. And then that just the 10 just goes along for the right, so we have 5x equals 10. Once again, we're at a point where we can just divide both sides by 5. And these 5s cancel. We get 10 over 5. That's just 2. All right, one more. So here we have a little bit more challenging one because we've got more terms. Again, you'll notice we have um, two cases of V. We have V on this side and V on that side. And we have numbers on both sides. So we'll have to combine like terms on both sides. So. Um, it doesn't matter where you start, but I'm going to start by moving the variables and combining those first. So I have 19v on this side and 15v on that side. It doesn't really matter which way you go. I'm going to decide to subtract 19v from both sides. If you wanted to subtract 15v from both sides, you'd still be doing it correctly, but we're just going to do it uh, the way that I prefer. So we're going to subtract 19v on both sides. And what we'll do is we'll leave the numbers alone for right now. And we'll do, on this side, these will cancel. And on this side, we have 15v uh, minus 19v, which is negative 4v. So simplifying, this 28 just goes along. This negative 8 goes along. These cancel, so there's nothing left over here. And then we have 15v minus 19v, which is negative 4v. From here, before we can solve for v, we need to get this number out of here. So we have negative 8. We're going to add 8 to both sides. So on this side, we have 28 plus 8, that's 36. And on this side, those cancel, so we just have negative 4v. And now we have negative 4v equals 36, so we're going to just divide both sides by negative 4. Okay, doing that, these negative 4s will cancel. On this side, we'll get negative 9, 36 divided by negative 4, negative 9. And that's our answer, v equals negative 9. All right, really quickly, let's review slope. So if we have two points... Um, x1, y1, x2, y2, um, any two points on a graph, we can use either of these formulas to calculate the slope. Usually when we see two ordered pairs like that, we would use this formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That should look familiar. Or you know you can do it rise over one over run. So as an example, let's use the, the second version of the formula to just calculate the slope given two points. You've done this many, many times. Okay, so first we'll take uh, this term will be our x2 and our y2. Uh, this one will be x1, y1. So we're going to take our formula, y2 minus y1, that will be y2, negative 6, minus y1, that's 7, so y2 minus y1, all over x2, which is 2, minus negative 3, which is x1. So we're just plugging this information into this formula, and then we need to simplify. So uh, we'll leave the top alone for a moment. On the bottom we have minus a negative, so we add so we have on top still negative 6 minus 7. On bottom we have 2 plus 3. So simplifying that, we have negative 6 minus 7. That's negative 13. And then 2 plus 3, that's 5. Making sure we're simplified. Both of those are prime numbers, so we can't simplify any further. That should just be a quick review on how to calculate slope. Now, from a graph, you're going to need this in just a second. You can do it two different ways. Remember our formula. You can do a rise over run, or you can use what we just did, use the actual subtraction formula. 
So looking at our graph, the first method I think is a simpler method. We're going to use rise over run. So using the graph, we'll do rise over run. So st I'm going to just pick this point to start at. We're going to do the run first and then the rise. It doesn't matter what order you go in. So we'll run and we count over one, two, three, four, five. Now I made it negative because we're counting to the left. Remember, counting to the right is positive, counting to the left is negative. And then our run, sorry, so that was our run. And then our rise is one, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we went up six. So we simply fill that in. The rise is six, the run is negative five. We can't simplify that because there's no common factors, and that's the that's our answer. Let's show you the other way you could do it. You can use these two points. So taking each point, this point here would be two, negative three. And that point over here would be negative three, three. So I've listed those points here. We can plug that information in just like we did a moment ago. Into our slope equation. So this term y2 goes here, this term y1 goes here. So three and negative three. And then this term x2 goes here, x1 goes right here. And then we just do the arithmetic. So three minus minus three, that's ends up being plus. So plus six over negative three minus two, that's negative five. Hey, look, we got the same answer. So you can do it either way. In general, when we're given a graph, I think using the rise over run method is going to be a lot easier for you. And You'll see in a moment why that's going to be useful. Um, if you're just given points like we were in this previous example, of course, you're going to have to use the formula. But I think if you're given a graph, doing rise over run is the easier so let's put all of this together. We're going to do point slope form again. Um, and then on the very next example, we're going to put slope and using point slope form together to write an equation. So just a quick reminder, point slope form is this form here, y minus y1 equals the slope m times x minus x1. So slope is m, and then our point is x1, y1. Okay. So as a quick example, let's say we had this formula here, y minus 2 equals negative 3 halves all times uh, x minus 5. So from that, we can extract two pieces of information. First, that the um, slope m is negative 3 over 2. And second, we can extract the point. x1 would be 5, y1 would be 2. So we can extract that point. Okay, so you can go either direction here. Take the slope and the point and write the equation, or take the equation and write the slope and the point. Okay, so we're going to put all of this together. And we're going to write the equation of a line in point-slope form, given that the line passes through this point and has a slope of three-fourths. So here's our basic format. We take y minus y1 equals m times all, or all times x. x minus x1, and simply plug everything in. So here is our y1. It goes in right there. y minus negative 7 equals the slope, three-fourths, uh, times... So our slope three fourths to all times x minus x1, which is eight. And then we can simplify since so we have a minus, a minus, minus a negative, that becomes a plus, and we're done in slope, uh, point slope form. Okay. I'm gonna go one step further. And this equation, or I'm sorry, in this problem, I've taken this straight from Alex. This is just what you'll see on your on your homework. Uh, it says writing the equation of a line through two points. So write find an equation of a line. Uh, find an equation for the line below. So it highlights two points that we can pick. And what we're going to do is we're going to um, do this in two steps. First, we're going to write the equation in point-slope form. Remember, that's what point-slope form looks like. And second, we're going to rearrange uh, the equation into slope-intercept form. So just as a reminder, slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b, that all familiar y equals mx plus b. So from there, I'm just going to pick one of the two points arbitrarily so that we can plug it into point slope form. So that would be right here, 4, 1. That's our point, 4, 1. Okay, and then from there, we're going to count the rise over run to get the slope so we can plug it in to uh, point slope form. Okay, so our run here is positive 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yep, 10. And it's positive because we're counting to the right. And then our rise is up 1, 2, 3, 4, positive 4. Okay, so our slope is positive 4, that's the rise, over positive 10, that's the run. We can simplify it to being 2 fifths, and now we just plug everything in. So our point is 
4 comma 1, so it'll be y minus y1, that's 1, equals the slope, 2 fifths time, all times x minus x1, here x1 is 4. So that is our answer, that's in uh, point slope form. Now, uh, typically in your algebra class, you're going to be asked to rearrange any equations like this into slope intercept form. Okay, so you might be wondering why do we go through all this trouble? It's a lot easier to plug in information from this graph into uh, point slope form, and then we can just do the algebra to put it into slope intercept form. So let's do that. Okay, like I said, we're going to write it in slope intercept form. So to do that, what we're going to do is take this equation, and I'm going to clear both fractions. So instead of distributing the two-fifths into here and dealing with the fractions, we're going to get rid of the fractions. First, to do that, we're going to multiply it by our common denominator, which is 5. So we are going to multiply both sides by 5. On this side, we'll hold off for a second. On this side, our 5 is going to cancel with our uh, 5 on the denominator. So we're left with 5 times this equals our 5 have canceled uh, 2 times all of that. So now we'll just distribute. So 5 times y and 5 times negative 1 gives us 5y minus 5. On this side, 2 times x, 2 times negative 4 gives us 2x minus 8. From there, we just do what we've done in the past, rearrange this into slope-intercept form. So the first thing I'll do is I'd like to combine my numbers. So I'll add 5 to both sides. Okay, so adding 5 to this side cancels it out. Adding 5 to this side, we have negative 8 plus 5. That's negative 3. The last thing, we want y to be all by itself. So we will, yeah, because we're trying to rearrange it into y equals mx plus b. So we'll divide both sides by 5. So that looks like this. Our 5s here will cancel. On this side, we have 2x minus 3 all over 5. And then we'll just simplify. So we have just y left on this side. We have 2 over 5x minus 3 over 5. And that's it. That would be the equation of, I'll go back to it, this line that we saw here is y equals 2 fifths x minus 3 fifths. So there you have it. Hopefully that's helpful. Please reach out with questions as you guys are working on your homework uh, on Alex and let me know if you need any help. Thanks. Bye.